looks like it's all dried, so let's cut that one out. Our craft, we were waiting for it to dry. I need to remember to leave a little bit at the top so that we can hang it on our tree. There we go. You see my bobble? And I'm going to cut a little hole in the top here, which you might want someone in your house, an adult in your house to help you do. I've got a little hole and I'm going to use a pipe cleaner so I can hang it on my tree. I'm going to thread that one through. There we go. There we go. We have our craft all finished. So it's got my picture of baby Jesus in the manger and I can hang that on my tree. Have you finished yours? Has it dried? Very good. You know, I haven't seen Kate yet. Should we go find Kate? Kate, I love having hot milk just before bed. Mm, me too. Like, Liv, I feel really cozy on the outside, but hot milk just makes me feel so cozy on the inside. So cozy, I feel like, mm, I feel like I could almost just fall asleep right here. <gasps> Okay, you fall asleep so easy, but don't fall asleep just yet because we are about to hear the end of the story. We're almost there, but not quite. Yeah, I probably shouldn't forget that part, the end. Mm -hmm. That's right, we're going to hear about someone who had a dream, but in this dream, they're actually awake. Huh? Yeah, I'll explain more later so it makes sense, but to get us in the mood, can you tell us about a dream you might have had, Kate? Well, Liv, that's like a really hard question because I rarely ever remembered my dreams. Like, in an entire year, I reckon I could count them on my hand here. Like, probably less than five dreams a year. But I guess there's one I could tell you about. Like, it's coming back to me right now. And it's about something that I absolutely love. Well, I love roller coasters. And so this dream, it was like I was in an indoor playground except the playground was a roller coaster. And I was there with my whole neighborhood and I'm really good friends with everyone in my neighborhood. So we're all on this roller coaster. We we're just going around and around and around. It was like my dream was on repeat. It was the best fun. And then, well, then I woke up and I realized I definitely wasn't on a roller coaster. <laughs> That's so cool, Kate. <laughs> what a strange dream. <laughs> And did you know that God can also speak to us through dreams? He spoke to many people in the Bible through dreams and visions and continues to today. And in just a moment, we're going to hear about someone who had a vision that carried a very spe special message for all people. And that message is part of the same story we heard about last week. Can you remember what it is?
you ever miss seeing the end of a movie? Maybe you were watching it at a friend's house and someone came to pick you up and you didn't get to see the end. Well, the end can be pretty important, can't it? And today we're going to hear the end of the story that we heard last week. We know how the story ends because the Bible, God's word alive and true, tells us about it. It's at the very end of the Bible in a book called Revelation. Can you say Revelation nice and loud with me? Are you ready? One, two, three, Revelation! That's right. And I've got my Bibles here. If you haven't got your Bibles, you can run and grab them now. But can you see? They look a little bit different, don't they? My Bible here doesn't have any pictures in it got all the words but no pictures but in this Bible here someone very talented has gone through and drawn pictures of all the things that happen throughout the Bible there's some very pretty pictures in here all the different things that have happened and you know we're going to read the end of the story today so we have to go to the very end of the book Oh, where are we? Here we go. It's called A Dream of Heaven and it's from the book of Revelation. John was one of Jesus' helpers. He was old now and living on an island, which might sound nice, except it was a prison. The leaders put him there to stop him from talking about Jesus. But I'm sure you don't think a little thing like being in a cell, in a prison, on an island in the middle of an ocean could stop God's plan, do you? One morning, Jesus appeared right there in John's cell. Jesus' eyes were bright and shining like the sun. I'm going to show you a secret, John, Jesus said, about when I come back. His voice was like the sound of rushing waters. Write down what you see so God's children can read it and wait with happy excitement. Then Jesus gave John a beautiful dream. We were talking about dreams just before. Except John was wide awake and what he saw was real and one day it will all come true. This is John's dream. I see a throne, and on a throne is a king, and the king is Jesus. Can you see King Jesus here? All around the throne, people are bowing down. They are giving him their treasures. There are loud cheers and clapping, clapping and bright laughter like a thousand waterfalls, and new bursts out singing a new song. This is our king, the lamb who died, so we don't have to, our rescuer. All honour and glory forever and ever, and every creature everywhere, in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea, joins in. Can you see all the creatures? And then, from all around, a wide immense, beautiful silence. And I see Satan, God's horrible enemy, thrown down and defeated. So all evil defeated. I wonder what happens next. I see a sparkling city shimmering in the sky, glittering, glowing, coming down. From heaven and from the sky, heaven is coming down to earth. God's city is beautiful. Walls of topaz, jasper, sapphire, wide streets paved with gold, gleaming pearl gates that are never locked shut. Where is the sun? Where is the moon? They aren't needed anymore. God is all the light people need. There is no more darkness and no more night. 
And the king says, look, God and his children are together again. No more running away or hiding. No more crying or being lonely or afraid. No more sick or dying because all those things are gone. Yes, they are gone forever. Everything sad has, be has come untrue. And see, I have wiped away every tear from every eye. And then a deep, beautiful voice that sounded like thunder in the sky says, look, I am making everything new. Everything new. That's a pretty incredible ending. You see, it was hard to squeeze all John saw into words and fit it on a page and cram it into a book. All the words on all the pages of all the books in all the world would never be enough. I am the beginning, Jesus said, and the ending. One day, John knew heaven would come down and mend God's broken world and make it our true, perfect home once again. And he knew in some mysterious way that would be hard to explain that everything was going to be more wonderful for once having been so sad. And he knew then that the ending of the story was going to be so great it would make all the sadness and tears and everything seem like it was just a shadow that is chased away by the morning sun. I am on my way, said Jesus. I'll be there soon. John came to the end of his book, but he didn't write the end because, of course, that's how stories finish. And this one is not over yet. So instead he wrote, Come quickly, Jesus, which perhaps is just another way of saying to be continued. <laughs> That's a pretty incredible vision that John sh saw and shared with us. I'd love to read this to you as well. It says, for anyone who says yes to Jesus, for anyone who believes what Jesus said, for anyone who will reach out to take it, then God will give them this wonderful gift. To be born into a whole new life, to be who they really are, who God always made them to be, their own true selves, God's dear child. Because you see, the most wonderful thing about this story is that it's your story too. Your story too. You see, we're still in the middle. This is the end of the story, but God's story is your story too. I would love to pray for you today. I'd love to pray together about finding yourself in God's big story. So let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you that you gave John a vision of when you're coming back, that you're going to make all things new, that you continue to make all things new. I thank you that you are the beginning and you are the ending. That Jesus, in every day we can live every moment with you. I thank you that you love us so much that you invite us to be part of your story, to be part of your family. And I pray for each and every one of my friends who would like to be part of your family, of your story, that they would know that you are their rescuer, Jesus. And they can put their hope, their faith, their trust in you. And all of Discovery Kids said, Amen! Liv, that's so exciting that we get to be with Jesus forever, that he is the end. 
I know, Kate, and I love that we get to be with him right here, right now, in the middle of the story. Like, we're not at the end yet. Mm -hmm. That is true. And Liv, I am so excited because very soon we get to celebrate Christmas, which means... Christmas carols! Yes! <laughs> On December 19th, it's Saturday at 7pm, we get to all come together and celebrate Christmas together. And I heard last week that there's a special guest. Did you guys hear who the special guest is? That's, did you hear? I did hear. It's Colin Buchanan. <laughs> He's going to sing some super fun Christmas songs and we're going to have a great time together. Yeah, celebrating Christmas. I cannot wait, Liv. Well, that's about all from us for now. So, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Bye.